what did you want to be professionally when you were in high school? If you can, if you even had that dream, like what was it? I did. I did. My dream came to me when I was 11 and a half years old, wow. just about to go in because my birthday's late. So I started school um, when I was 11 and a half, almost 12. Mm. And, and so when my dream came to me, I still remember the dream to this day, very detailed. I I was sitting I'm in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear this. You remember it yes. so vividly. Great. Let's do yes. It. <laughs> yes. And let me correct that. It's 12 because okay. yeah, my birthday's late. So 12 years old. Mm -hmm. um, and so I remember the dream. I'm in this office space. Um, the lights are dim. I got hardwood mahogany furniture and there's this paint, this person it was a male sitting on the chair, but he wasn't sitting. He was kind of like lounged. Mm. And the chair was that old time, you know, those old time um, couches with the um, buttoned yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in the, in the sofa. Yeah, yeah. And so it's leather and it's nice and brown. And I'm sitting in a very cozy brown chair myself. Mm. And he's just sharing his problems to me. And the phone rings and my friend at the time was the receptionist and she says, whoever I had a crush on at that time, that was the last name she called me. So she said, Mrs. Shida, which was this Italian boy who was my neighbor. And she wow. said, Mrs. Shida, uh, we have a client here waiting for you. And like she said, your 11 o'clock is here. And I said, thank you. And she hangs up the phone and she can, I continue to have this person speak to me. And I'm now in the dream looking and thinking, what is going on and yeah. why are people here to see me right. and what am I doing for this person? Yeah. And I remember waking up and telling my grandfather the dream. And he says, well, my dear, that sounds like you're going to be either a shrink or a psychiatrist. And I was like, what? I didn't want to, it just, it just yeah. didn't sound right. I'm like yeah. a shrink. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> right. And so I was so determined that this dream came back to me. It's almost every day I thought about this dream. It felt so real. And I remember going to the library and just researching. Mm. And I didn't like what it said to be a shrink. I didn't like the, the, the definition of yeah. it. I didn't like the definition of the psychiatrist. I'm like, why am I giving medication? I don't want to give medication mm. to people. I want to help people like me. Right. And the, I was led to look into social work and counselor, guidance counselor, and social work was the fitting title. Mm. And let me tell you, I took that title and I'm like, this is what, this is what I'm going to be. Only for my guidance teacher to tell me I can't be that. What bothered me was because this counselor, he used to give me lunch money because my mother never gave me lunch money. Mm. So to see someone that I trusted yeah. to look at me and tell me that I couldn't be yeah. Yeah. something that I was only good for being working with. He said, it's best that you work with senior citizens. Wow. Um, that would probably be today PSW mm. and not to say it's a bad job, but yeah. why do you think that you get to now choose for yeah. me? Yeah. And is, is that still your motivation today? Or has I have love you helping people. Yeah. But I've developed boundaries. Yes. Some serious boundaries. I was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> some serious boundaries. And you know, when you are a survivor of sexual abuse, there there are so many layers to um the self esteem, mm -hmm. the confidence that it's like you never you didn't get, I didn't get to know who I was. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to develop a sense of who I thought I was in as a little girl. So because my innocence was taken from me and my, my happy moments, my fun, I was forced to grow up real fast. And so to hide my shame and my guilt, I figured why not just show up for others mm -hmm. the way that I actually want people to show up for me. But you know what? It just feels better that I make sure that I, I cook the food, I wash the clothes, I comb the hair. Mom asked me to do anything. Yes, I do. I never say no. Mm -hmm. And so when I got older, by the time I got to college, I realized, okay, she's actually manipulating me and taking advantage of me because I don't say no. Right. 
And I start to realize, you know, my father's never, ever going to show up for me the way I wanted him to. Mm -hmm. And neither is my mom. So I need to shut this down now. It didn't happen within that moment. But because of the teaching that I was receiving in college of family dynamics, you know, how, how we function as human beings within our environment versus outside of our environment. And I'm reading these books and I'm like, oh, no. I have to shut it down. And so it was painful. It was painful to say no. And there was times I had to learn the lessons over and over and over because the closer the blood, Mm. the harder it is to let go, right? And so when I realized that I had to choose me, I still got to learn it again. So every sister that I have, I had a season of learning a lesson Mm -hmm. until I finally cut the cord. That's eight seasons, eh? By the way, people, if you're listening, that's oh, eight yeah. seasons. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's, but you know, it's funny you say that because I find that to be one of the most liberating moments when you're able to say no to like your parents or the closest ones to you. Yes. Because I yeah. learned it hard as well for years. Same thing, just, you know, I don't know if it's a cultural thing, um, but mm-hmm. it's definitely one of those things that, you know, we find it very hard children of our parents we find it very hard to say no to them and yes you know we're adults and we're still finding it difficult to say no sometimes we'll slip up and say yes but you know just being able to say no for the first time is freeing i think that's something yeah. that you know a lot of people need to it's, try. A, it's a culture thing it's yeah. a culture thing yeah. for some of us but it depends on how we were all raised that's true and so i'll speak for the jamaicans because that's where my roots is yeah. right so Jamaicans have this thing where, you know, I gave birth to you, Mm -hmm. so I own you, Mm -hmm. and you shall do what I say. I am the parent, you are the child. And so until we start to realize that they're just carrying on the same generational cycle. Yes. Yes, you are the parent, but now I am my own big woman. That's it. Right? (laughs) And I get to say no, because what you're doing, I do not like. Yes. Right? Yes. 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 Oh, man. 